it's summertime, yay! Just kidding, I don't like summer. I just wanna cool down for like five seconds, is that possible? Last summer we made what might be my favorite video of ours, where we took a deeper look at some defunct and still operating family fun centers, mostly that I grew up with or that were exclusive to my area of Colorado Springs, Colorado. There are a few we didn't cover in that video, and there was always an intention to make a sequel. This is that sequel. LaserQuest is a pretty well-known laser tag company. It was founded in the UK in 1989 and still has several locations operating in England. In 1993, they would expand their locations to the US and Canada. We had one location here in Colorado Springs and it came along in 1996. When it was built, the shopping center it was a part of was booming. At its peak in 2005, they were averaging 2,000 games of laser tag played a week. I remember going here quite a few times for birthday parties, and I'll be honest, I felt the same way I do now. Laser tag is boring, and I think that's pretty much all they had. There may have been a tiny arcade in the waiting room or something, but other than that, there weren't many options. The shopping center that contained LaserQuest would almost completely die off in the early 2010s. By 2013, they were averaging only 200 games a week, a measly 10% of what it was in the glory days. With most retailers moving to the north and east, it seemed that LaserQuest was left by itself. The Colorado Springs location would close in January of 2014. It's actually pretty impressive that this place lasted 18 years. Despite the fact that it made it till 2014 and almost everyone had smartphones by then, I couldn't find many pictures or videos of the place. That's honestly a little weird to me. Mr. Biggs closed two years earlier in 2012, and there's a ton of visual documentation of that place. Behind me is where the Colorado Springs Laser Quest once stood. You would go through these doors and play laser tag. The side facing the street is actually a dash mark. So that's pretty lame. And this once booming shopping center has been left almost completely abandoned and boarded up. Truly depressing. In September of 2020, LaserQuest would end up shuttering every location in North America. With the uncertainty of the economic impact of COVID-19, they didn't feel it was worth it. There is one laser tag place in Ohio that still uses LaserQuest equipment. They have no affiliation with the LaserQuest company. The equipment was just abandoned, so they decided to save a few bucks and use it. LaserQuest still operates in the UK to this day. For some reason, it's weird for me to think about British people playing laser tag. I don't know why. It just seems like it's kind of an American thing. Oh, what's all this then? I'm going to shoot you with my laser gun. It's a technological world of science fiction, it is. Several folks asked me why I left It's out of the first video, and that's a reasonable question. It was a family fun center in Colorado Springs that is now defunct. It would have been perfect. Well, the fact is I never went there. Not once. I think I passed by it a couple times. Therefore, all of this information will be just from things I found online. I have no personal history with this place. With food, fun, and parties all under one roof, It's is Colorado Springs' best family entertainment value. It's is actually a small chain of family fun centers. Their headquarters is in Dallas, and they still have locations in three different Texas cities. So if you're wondering if it's worth going to Texas to visit one of these, the answer is no. Nothing is worth the pain that accompanies visiting Texas. In February of 2008, ITS would open a location in Colorado Springs. If you saw our first Family Fun Center video, or if you grew up here, you'll remember Mr. Biggs. ITS seems like it was a very similar place. Again, I never went to ITS, so please correct me if I'm wrong. Let's go through the list of their offerings. A 
full arcade, bowling, bumper cars, bounce houses, and even a few actual rides. They had this frog jump one and this glider one where you would lay down and spin around. They also had a full pizza and salad bar. Seeing this footage makes me kind of sad that I never visited this place when it was around. I probably thought I was too old for this kind of thing at that point. Being an adult is stupid. In June of 2016, ITS would permanently close down seemingly out of nowhere. After eight years of family fun, ITS is calling it quits. There's an entire news story on YouTube about it. Apparently the owners didn't tell anyone. They interview one of the employees and she says she showed up for her regular shift only to find a sign on the door saying they were closed. And when I walked in, she's like, Brie, you do realize that we closed down, right? That's a pretty crappy way to find out that you're unemployed. It's would be replaced with a YMCA facility that is still there to this day because we don't have enough of those around. Some people are kind of excited that we're getting to YMCA, but I'm like, at what cost? This place kept coming up after I posted the first video. Much like It's, I never went to Tickle's Fun Factory, but it's not because I refused to do so. It mostly existed before I was even born. In fact, this is the only place on either of my videos that never had a website of any kind. However, thanks to the Public Library's newspaper archives, folks on Reddit, and the wonderful Facebook group Old Picks of Colorado Springs, I was able to piece some things together and determine that the place did indeed exist. It all started in the early 80s when Teresa Wilson, a counselor at a camp for disabled children, hired a clown that gave a very lackluster performance. Not wanting to let the kids down, she ran home to grab her magic set and a makeshift clown outfit and put on her own show. She would later name this character Tickles the Clown. Teresa would realize her dream of having a place that kids could have great birthday parties, and in 1985, Tickles Playport was opened at the Mall of the Bluffs in Colorado Springs. From what I've gathered, this iteration was basically like a large play place. Tickles Playport would become a rousing success. The location would be moved to a larger building on Montebello Square, and the name would be changed to Tickles Fun Factory. So what did they have? Well, a huge ball pit in a large padded bathtub, a big net called the spider web that kids could climb on, and an attraction called Walk on Water that was apparently like a huge waterbed. A lot of people on the Old Picks of Colorado Springs Facebook group mentioned scooters that you could ride around on. There was also an art room and a refreshment room where you could watch videos of Tickle's magic performances. When I asked people what their favorite part about Tickle's Fun Factory was, the answer was absolutely unanimous. I hope I explained this correctly, but apparently there was a wall or a room in which you would strike a fun pose, the lights would flash, and your shadow would stay on the wall. One of the articles I found mentions the age restrictions they had. You had to be 12 or under, and if you were over 18, you had to be accompanied by a child. Ages 13 to 17 were not welcome because, quote, they tend to get so exuberant they were endangering the smaller children, end quote. And look, I can totally understand that. I worked at a mini golf course for about seven years, and that age range was always the absolute worst. I'm not saying I was any better at that age, but banning them from certain places makes sense to me. Tickles was open seven days a week, and you would pay $2.50 for the first hour and a dollar for each additional half hour. Not too bad. Sadly, in 1989, Teresa would realize that Tickle's Fun Factory had taken over her life. She was working 12 to 15 hours, seven days a week, and found the pressures of managing a business to be extreme. This would lead to her closing the Fun Center down for good. It does seem like it was good for her. What saddens me is that the business side always seems to destroy the fun side. You see, when she first opened Tickle's Fun Factory, she got to play the clown a lot and run around and make kids smile. But she got so busy that she had to pretty much retire the character of Tickle's altogether. I'm not sure what she would go on to do after this or where she is now. 
She would be 76. I hope she's somewhere out there enjoying retirement. I'm currently parked in the parking lot that once contained the mall at the bluffs and the original Tickles Playport. As you can see, this area is much more active than where Laser Quest was, but there's nothing too exciting over here either. And this is the location Tickles moved to when it officially became Tickles Fun Factory. The building is currently empty, but it's an active shopping center. In the last Family Fun Center video, I spoke about Champions Golf and Games and how it was left abandoned for years and finally leveled. Recently, it looks like they're definitely building something new on that location. I'd like to think it'll be something exciting, but deep down, I know it's probably some apartment building that only rich snobs will be able to afford and that will just perpetuate homelessness. Something else I had mentioned in that video is that a place I visited as a kid, Mountasia, was purchased and converted into what is now Lost Island. It's been operating for several years now, but I hadn't visited it since it was Mountasia. And I have to say that in my mind, it's hands down the best mini golf in town. It actually feels a lot like Champions did when I was a kid. Definitely give it a visit when you get the opportunity. As far as family fun centers go, there really aren't many left in Colorado Springs. Maybe it's an idea that just doesn't work as well anymore. Every time one of these places opens, they seem to run out of money pretty quickly and close down within about 10 years. It seems that most places are choosing to focus on one aspect of entertainment rather than trying to fit everything under one roof. Mini golf courses focus on mini golf. Bowling alleys are just bowling alleys. And that makes sense. I'd imagine it's a lot less expensive to house and maintain one attraction than it is to try and have everything. There's another place called Whirly Ball that I have not tried, but it looks kind of strange. It's basically like basketball while driving a go-kart. And I guess it's a fairly popular game nationwide. I wouldn't have expected that, but when you can convince people that pickleball is cool, I guess you can do anything. Speaking of pickleball, there's an entire facility in town dedicated to just that. I know we're getting away from the whole family fun center thing here. I just wanted to express how incredulous I am toward the whole pickleball phenomenon. Just get a ping pong table. Okay, moving on, there are still a few laser tag places around. There's a place called Main Event that has laser tag and bowling, so I guess that's kind of like a family fun center. But probably the closest thing we have to a full-on family fun center is Urban Air Adventure Park. This place has go-karts, laser tag, trampolines, an indoor playground, climbing walls, and a ton more. Heck, the only thing it looks like they're missing is an arcade. Overall, I just kind of wish we had some of the places that are gone. I guess the moral here is don't take things for granted. One day you'll be having a blast at a place you love, likely not realizing that it'll be the last time you set foot there. And then, maybe you'll be like me and obsess over finding some piece of it. Ever since we made that video last year, I have been trying so hard to find some footage of joyrides. I mean, it shut down in 2006. There's no way there wasn't some dad that brought a video camera to document a day of fun with the family. That footage has to exist somewhere. If it exists in your house, let me know, and I will honestly pay you to see it. But then again, maybe there's a beauty to only having the memories. Maybe I would see the footage and say, hey, that place is more lame than I thought. Who knows? I'll see you guys later. Welcome to Rodney's Mobile Recreational Area. The health department shut down our last location, so now, I come to you. Darts. Skee-ball. Rodney, you can't even, there's not even enough space to roll the ball. This is stupid. I could, no. I could buy all this stuff myself, 
play it at my house for way cheaper than what you're charging me. Okay, sh shut up. Shut up. You paid to have fun. Now have fun. And what is this? You really think someone's just gonna play Clue with you in the trunk of your car, Rodney? I'm gonna kill you. Oh, now we're threatening the customer. Great job. Great business model. And now, a brand new ball pit. Rodney, I gotta say, this feels pretty demeaning to me. I don't care about your feelings. Well, I'm gonna ask for a refund. <laughs> Good luck with that. So message me on Craigslist, and we'll meet up somewhere. Rodney's Mobile Recreational Area. It's a blast! Side effects of visiting Rodney's Mobile Recreational Area include, but are not limited to, stomach cramps, leg cramps, arm cramps, heart cramps, brain cramps, painful nauseating sensation, prolonged lack of oxygen, levitation, tax evasion, eviction from your home, having your home stolen by homeless mercenaries, having your home stolen by rabid cat bars, capital punishment, cancer, and having too much fun. Please contact your doctor before visiting Rodney's Mobile Recreational Area. Rodney's Mobile Recreational Area. I don't, no, I, I don't. Are you a cop? Are you a cop? Look, look, but. Look, buddy, I, I don't mess with cops. I don't mess with cops.